Australia's sportiest home videos. What do you think? Yes, although I think we saw enough animal behaviour last night, to be honest. <laughs> That's true. Actually, this week I thought I'd uh, just take a look at the life of three of the senior mm. legends of the sporting world and a few different people. Firstly, Jimmy Connors. Uh, basically, Jimmy's been over there in New York turning the US Open into a 40th birthday party for himself. The New York crowd and the American media seem to be interested in absolutely nothing but Jimbo, although all he's done so far is beat this fellow called Jamie on scene, who is, of course, on scene and unheard of <laughs> as well. Hey, actually, that's not fair. He did beat Yvonne Lendl in the French Open, but then again, who hasn't beaten Yvonne Lendl? I in the beat last Yvonne six? Lendl just a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I believe Jamie on scene is ranked 5,012th in the juniors. <laughs> yeah. On you, Jimbo. Actually, I wasn't surprised when, uh, when you did beat Yvonne Lendl. It was when he beat you at the stand up comic challenge afterwards that yes. I started to worry. Yvonne is notoriously witty. Yes. <laughs> These two Czechoslovaks walk into a bar. <laughs> And that's the punchline. <laughs> Love Ivan. Yes. I, well, I have seen one really uh, a good quote from Jimmy Conner Connors. I've been, he's been quoted sort of at length in just about every paper and on TV. But the one that, that did grab my attention was he says his new hero is George Burns because George has just signed a 15-year contract and he's 95 years old. <laughs> Which makes him, what, 30 years older than Jimmy? Yes. yes. Yeah, what I'm getting, I do admire Connors for, you know, his tenacity and what have you, but I'm getting a little bit sick of this what's wrong with the younger tennis players of today routine that we keep getting from him. If it's not him every second day, it's John McEnroe telling us, you know, how much better it was in, in his day. And uh, I really think it's a sign that the, the sort of the me generation of tennis is approaching its use-by date. And they're, they're both getting ready to move into commentary. So you can imagine how much more we're going to hear what, is, what it was like in our day. And can't you imagine sort of McEnroe or Connors in commentary saying, I can't believe this guy. He hasn't thrown his racket. That just, yes. you know, so I would have done this. I would have thrown my racket. I'd yeah. be arguing with the umpire. Look at that. That's blatant good behaviour. Yeah. <laughs> Run them out of the game, yes. I say. But another senior legend who's back in the news is a former world chess champion, Bobby Fischer. Now, the, the question that is going around in the States is, why has a chess player come out of retirement? And uh, the best answer I've heard so far is that uh, Reebok are about to bring out a new chess shoe and he wants the endorsement for it. <laughs> and I, I think it's, it's entirely possible. I mean, we have chess shoes for, for everything else. And I, they're probably moving to cross trainers for people who want to play sort of bridge or Chinese checker, yeah, yeah. Ludo, that sort of thing as well. And the slogan, perhaps, you know, sort of uh, life short, think hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or life short, play black queen to white porn fight. Or maybe how about Nike, just do it, only take 11 hours. <laughs> Oh, Bobby right. Fisher is a wacko. A man who could, yes. Bobby, yes, yes. Well, uh, Bobby Fisher is a wacko. Do you know he? And I, look, I say this because I love the man dearly. He, uh, he, he wouldn't play until he'd had his own personal toilet seat raised an extra 2.5 millimeters. Why? I don't guess. Where were they playing the game? Uh, well, no, I don't think he was actually <laughs> sitting on the toilet seat while he played. <laughs> Because he did, and he wouldn't play until uh, he had his own chairs especially made. He wanted millimetre adjustments. I mean, what a lunatic. I thought all, all the tantrum throws were in tennis, but they're obviously in chess. No, well, and there's Connors and, and uh, Fisher, who we just talked about, and probably another big tantrum thrower in the world of sport was an X-Man I was about to talk about, Ian Botham. Now, an extraordinary story about Ian Botham has come to light in the last couple of days. Apparently, during the one-day international against Pakistan in England last week, Ian Botham did the incredible thing of giving the umpire his portable phone to hold while he was out on the field. Now this is actually true, he had a mobile phone, he asked the umpire would he hold it. Now that seems silly enough, but apparently not as Botham was bowling, but as another bowler was coming in to bowl, the phone started to ring. <laughs> and the, the umpire had to stop play and answer the call. It turned out it was Botham's manager <laughs> calling for it. I'm glad to see his manager has the finger on the pulse about what he is what he yeah, up yeah. to <laughs> at the time. Obviously the ideal man to have as a manager. And uh, so Botham sang out from first slip that he'd call him back later. This is, I know this all sounds like one of these silly stories we make up, but it's true. And then shortly before lunch, one of Ian's friends, friends rang to find out if he wanted to go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> but, so. Uh, the possibilities are endless here. You know, I, th I think it's wonderful that Ian still has time to play cricket when he's obviously such a busy man and has yeah, so many yeah. people who are, who are needing to be in contact with him about these crucial matters. And I was thinking, you know, maybe he can extend it now. He does field regularly at slip, and I was thinking we have stump cam, maybe stump facts could be something yeah, we yeah. could work on so Good that thinking. people can get important documents to him. And I was thinking, instead of using a protector, maybe you could look at a, a post office box. <laughs> yes, I 
could say something about French letters, but I'm not Doug Mulray. <laughs> no. Actually, well, I suppose it's only a matter of time before he's batting with a little dictaphone, sort of saying, uh, third ball, second over. I played it rude. <laughs> outside the off stump, all for his autobiography. Yeah. Well, Carl Lewis actually reported on the opening ceremony at the Olympics on a portable phone. So While he was marching? Yep, while he was marching. When he can do it during the 100 metre sprint, then we'll really know technology and athletes have, have reached a new plane. Yeah, no one's far from anyone anymore. No. no. <laughs> I just thought of that. That's, I could make a fortune out of advertising. Debbie, we'll, uh, we'll see you for your league preview. Mm -hmm. It should be good for a couple of laughs, if not accurate. But right now it's down to Melbourne and Elmwood Feast.